start an army, you look to your blood. You look to your buddies. You look to your friends. There's only a couple guys in the whole world that make me love pro wrestling, and you're one of them. You know all the bad shit you've heard about us? It's all true. But another thing that's true is we love professional wrestling, and that's why we're here. I'm not sports entertainment anymore. Talk to him, kid. This is our new beginning, and it starts tonight. A new day is dawning for TX. So who you talking to? Welcome, everybody, to X-Pac 12360. I'm your host, Sean, X-Pac Waltman. Today on the show, well, a little bit later on, we're going to speak to Jeff Cobb. Yeah. Mr. Athletic, a.k.a. the monster Matanza Cueto. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, I saw Josh Barnett, speaking of Je- uh, Jeff Cobb, I saw former UFC champion and uh, catch wrestling specialist Josh Barnett uh, this weekend at Black Settle Black Fest, you know, uh, Glenn Danzig's. That best. festival? Yeah, and so he was telling me he had a match with Jeff Cobb recently. Oh, yeah? I, yeah, I'd like to ask him about that. And oh, see how that oh, for sure. Yeah. That was the festival that they were trying to get the Lucha Underground Stars at, but it That's just right. didn't work out? Yeah, I don't even want to go into that, because I was trying to help uh, Glenn out with that, and it just fell apart. But... Did they get any wrestling at all, or no? No, no, no wrestling at no, all? No. Uh-huh. And it was fine. It, the, 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 it was strictly because Glenn Danzig is a, is a big wrestling fan and a fan of Lucha Underground. It had nothing to do with it was going to make the festival any better. Any better. It was just like a bonus for him. Yes, yes, okay. that's all. Hey, and, and everyone uh, uh, joining us here, have a little panel going here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, all the way to the, on the other end of the table here from Uprox with Spandex, Bill Hanstock, ladies and gentlemen. What's up, everybody? Thanks for having me back. Two weeks in a row. Welcome back. Welcome. And hey, and uh, first time joining the show, Johnny Laquasto. He does a lot of things. Are you still on uh, uh, Wrestling Compadres? Yeah, Fox Sports and yes. every single week, and also uh, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, That's which right. you know very well. Absolutely. Uh, commentary every single week, so a lot of fun. And I'm also wearing spandex. What are the odds? <laughs> You're also an athlete, aren't you? Not, and a personal not, not trainer like or something? I'm a, I'm a physical therapist. I help athletes recover from injuries, but no, I would not call myself an athlete. I was the last guy off my bench in college basketball. I had 10 career points. It's a sad career. He's uh, an athlete okay. facilitator. Yeah. And, and uh, TK Trinidad, she's here with us right now, but um, last week she was involved in a, in a car accident. And like a near fatal car yeah, accident. Yeah, it was really bad. And, uh, it's insane. If you yeah. look at the picture of her car, it flipped and landed on top of itself and she only walked away with like a scratch on her finger because she's a brick house <laughs> and i think the car was safe is it a volvo oh, my god thank TK, god tk is an athlete yes yeah. she is yeah so um she's uh fighting with insurance companies at the moment yeah she'll be back for the yes. jeff cobb interview i'm sure could i ask about the danzig fest yeah man this is danzig mother danzig yeah, of course oh, oh my god how great was that festival? it was great and um uh, the the really cool thing is before Danzig went on Ministry was on I got to see them do New World Order live. Lord, <laughs> no way! <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's yeah. incredible. It was nice. I had a great time. And um, what where, else? Where was that? It was out like, it was out on some f- like Irvine. Yeah, it was out in Irvine because I was trying to get Mark Donica to drive me out there. <laughs> <laughs> My car wasn't a piece of garbage. I would have done it. I was like, hey Mark. You like we got like backstage this? passes, VIP parking. The, honestly, the <laughs> the worst decision I had to make was like, I don't think my car would make. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. I don't want anybody to see me driving up in the hoopty. <laughs> <laughs> he just goes and rents a car <laughs> to sw- take you there. You no, damn it, it, that's a good idea, Jimbo. Where were you last weekend? <laughs> sorry. No, yeah, I was no. like, get high, watch wrestling. No, I was I was thinking about you, Mark. Because I know you dig that stuff. Fuck you, you're missing Danzig like that broke my heart. Okay, I would have driven you both. Why do you guys <laughs> another idea, for God's sake? <laughs> so, it um, out there. you know, without TK here with, uh, doing the news uh, segment first, I'm kind of I'm kind of discombobulated. Want, so, well, so what mean, do you want to talk about right now, everyone? Let's talk about Get High Watch Wrestling on let's Friday. Do that. Another sold out show, number yes. two. It was excellent. Yeah, and we were joined. This time, last time, Brian Posehn joined us. Whoa. Yes, and uh, that was really cool. And then uh, uh, last Friday, I was wondering, like, I was when I was there, when I got there and I arrived and I was talking to everyone, I'm like, huh, maybe we don't have a comedian joining us this time. <laughs> and then, like, you know, right as we were getting ready to go out, uh, Ron's going, oh, yeah, Mike. And Mike, Mike Lawrence, yeah. who, was, who was the comedian that uh, 
sat sat in with us. Um, he's amazing, man. I'm a huge fan. He was of his. so funny. Very yeah, funny. he when, killed it. Those he, two killed it. When are you guys getting Doug Benson on it? Uh, whenever Doug Doug said he was going to do it. Nice. Yeah, because when we were on Get Doug with High, right. uh, he said he was definitely going to come do it. And it's just we doing it on a Friday or Saturday. Everyone else is, you know, all Looked. my friends and you know even Ron. Really has got four shows. On yeah. Friday. yeah. Right. <laughs> So we're um, on the road. Too. Well, yeah, you know how that goes, Johnny. Yeah, I'm I'm not in town that often on weekends, but I'd love to come to the show. Is yeah, it definitely once a month, or how does it work? Yeah, it is. And right. the next one's going to be June twenty first, Wednesday, and that's a Wednesday, and that means most people yeah. are probably home, right? That's yeah. a guaranteed and they sellout. can show up. Guaranteed sellout. Yes, and it's all glow themed, ladies that's wrestling right. theme for the glow debut. Nice. You know, I actually got to go to the premiere of that documentary a couple of years ago, and I got to tell you, that's in a family, right? Yes. Yeah, I was there on, too. In yeah. Silver Lake. Oh no, a no, different one. Fact. But continue. So Maybe there were a couple. but okay. um, I went to one in Silver Lake, not a dry eye in the house, and I guess that's where Genji Cohen got the uh, inspiration from that documentary to make the Netflix show. Because she huh. didn't know anything about wrestling, but she watched really? it, and it was such a compelling documentary. She's like, I'm going to turn this into a TV show. Oh, I saw the really trailer, good. and it, it looks like they did it excellent job this looks like one hell of a show it looks yeah. so fun the, the yeah. only bummer about it is that they're not using any actual glow like like the people in the glow show aren't the characters from glow well, I, like I, there's I not going to be a little egypt and a mount fuji yeah. and a hollywood and yeah. vine God. kind Which of thing is, well, you know I, I get it I understand. I understand it but it would be so much cooler of, of a glow show because those characters like it's hard like even if you're making it up it's, it's like, hard to get characters yeah. more ridiculous than the, the housewives. housewives yeah, exactly. yeah. Oh, they're, they're so funny. awesome and i think they're every so nutchka, awesome. yeah, nutchka, yeah. yeah and i think every guy has a different one they had a crush on growing up for sure like i know i love cheyenne the native american girl mm. that was mine one of them from hollywood and vine was really beautiful to me when i was a kid Jean i think it was Versoni. hollywood jan versoni her name is she's great yeah. Yeah, yeah she's really cool and so. also like if you were using like the actual characters in the actual history of glow you could get the fact that like sylvester stallone's mom was such a big part of it like that's a yeah. huge part of the story that's like it, it's like the the glow thing if you watch the documentary it's like you can't possibly make up how ridiculous glow no. was no but look at all the things that like people like if you watch wrestling today or wwe wrestling yeah they're using a lot of the same type of things that glow was doing back then like all the backstage segments and you know the Very campy, campy comedy yeah. stuff. I mean, yeah. I, not just WWE, but a lot of people have you know attempted to emulate that. Like I wish that El Rey Network would take like the Glow characters and yeah. do like a Lucha Underground style like Glow modern day Glow. But show with good wrestling. Like, yeah, with good wrestling, where you take like the characters and like you put like you know Rachel Allering or like Sexy yeah. Star or whatever in those character gimmicks. And then, like, do, like, the backstage cinematic thing where it's like, no, this is all really happening. But make it comedic, it's a real though, story. is what you're saying. Well, I mean, there's going to be comedy anyway. Like, if you watch Lucha Underground, there's a lot of comedy anyway. Like, Dario Quintos has got a lot of comedy in him. Yeah, yeah more so than usual. Marty, than Marty Martinez. Like, they're, like, I mean, you can have it be serious and campy at the same time, which sure. Lucha Underground is great at. Most of the comedy still comes from Famous B, in my opinion, from the show. <laughs> sure, yeah. huh. And he's the Mac. You talk about the Mac too, but you talk about a show that uses people to their strengths. No right. one does it better than Lucha Underground. They, I've known B for years, and he's just always been that character. And they just found the perfect thing for him. This yeah. is a great example. That's, I, I like that. And, and, um, hey, we were originally talking about get high and watch wrestling. Do you yeah, want to go to that clip? It seems like I'm kind of no, going backwards a little bit. It. It's but, your show, man. You do what you want. Yeah, yeah. I, know, I know, but. I'd like for um, the flow to be right. So I just shot some stuff on my phone while we were hanging out there and yeah. threw it together to show people what it's like when you're at Get High with Wrestling. It was very wrestling. cool. Uh, people, some people came all the way from Georgia. Yeah, there was this couple. Yes. We'll play so are we going to play the play the video? Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, I thought you were going to oh. throw to it. <laughs> This is the primary highlight of our vacation. We were um, wanting to have an awesome food and comedy show. They and came all the way from Georgia. And uh, we booked it, and we're super excited because I love the Generation X. I'm a huge um, wrestling fan. I'm dragging him into it, taking him standing. But How often does that happen? And, yeah. yeah. Getting to high watching it's a keeper. Oh, I can't give her this. This is a little roach. Keep playing. Keep playing. Yeah. yeah. He's so skinny. Oh, yeah. He's lost a lot of weight. And there's me and Lula. Lula! I didn't want to do this out here, but I 
found some stuff that I think might belong to you. <laughs> <laughs> It's nothing more recovering meth addict than a dude who's just like now started carrying around a dog in a bag. <laughs> She's amazing, honestly. Like people say, oh, the dog lucked out. I'm the one that lucked out. Oh, that's a beautiful oh, She's amazing. And you know what? Like, honestly, she's like. She likes this right now. <laughs> Honestly, like from how I found her, uh, she's she'll be happy in pretty much any situation. So she just pissed on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah, that's she really likes that. this. <laughs> yeah, that's, right, that's the second time I cried in my adult life. <laughs> Oh, no, there's so many things like we like to do as comics, and there's some things we do. This is everything I love about. Come comics. on, Jimbo, with the f bombs, man. You want me to bleep those? Yeah, All man. Right. We can't have you f bombs on the show. Lawrence, being that getting high and watching wrestling, we got two words for you. Fantastic. Looks like a blast. I can't it, wait to It is really fun. I'm looking forward to the, going to the next one. Yeah, I, I hope you guys hey. can make it. Yeah. Since it's on a Wednesday, hopefully you guys don't have anything going we'll on. Just go right after Afterbirth. Exactly. You should get on me in. What's interesting about I haven't seen Funches in a couple of months in person, and the last time we, him and I were talking, I was like, man, you look great. He's like, yeah, you know, I just really wanted to get healthy, and he looks like he got even better shape since then. Yeah, he's continuing fantastic. to lose weight. And yeah. oh, good for him. And Lawrence, I've known him for a long time. He's hilarious and brilliant, great comic. And he's been a lifelong wrestling encyclopedia too. So, yeah. or, any go. comics that you know of that you think would fit in perfect for this? To be as guests or to come and hang oh, out? Oh, either or watch way. So many. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Like, there's this, Does something. Does Kermel watch wrestling? Um, I, I know he's so. a sports guy. Yeah. I don't know about wrestling per se, but comedy and wrestling have so many parallels, especially early in the career, in your career. You're, oh, yeah. you're driving everywhere, not getting paid. It's it's a rough go. And also, you get screwed over a lot as you're working your way up. So there's a deep respect like between comedians and wrestlers, and that's why you know it, there's a kinship there. It's like wrestlers love comedy, because if you're a pro wrestler, you have to laugh, otherwise it's going to be a rough go. And comedians love wrestlers because of the sacrifice they make. Yeah. Uh, Brody Stevens. Yeah, Brody w doesn't necessarily watch now, but Brody definitely knows all about wrestling, and part of the Brody Stevens character right. it, it's is very so pro wrestling. It's, it's yeah. so good. I think he would be perfect for it as well. Hmm. Absolutely. There's so many people. I can give you a list. We yeah. should try and get a female comic for the glow one. Oh, yeah. Uh, Barbara, That'd be awesome. Barbara Gray. Um, yes, Barbara Gray has done a lot of cool uh, pro wrestling inspired things. She's she fantastic. was part of the Iron oh, nice. Sheik roast and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll give you I'm sure Ron knows, knows all, yeah, the, all Ron the comedians knows that yeah. love wrestling, too. So, hey, um, and getting into a little bit of news, I heard you guys talking about... Uh, you, um, we were talking about money in the, the money women's in the money bank. in the bank, right? The first ever women's money yeah. in the bank match. Yeah, and uh, when is that? This this coming week? June no, 18th. June 18th. Yeah. It's got Natalia, Becky Lynch, um, Tamina, Snuka, Charlotte, and Carmella. Five. For now. For now. Oh, you think well, they're going to the add some people to it? women's roster. On SmackDown. Yeah, Nia Jax made a joke uh, on Twitter guys, about that. Lana's been dancing, uh, so Lana, okay. I'm just kidding. She's been stretching the legs out to she climb the ladder. Lana wants to wrestle so bad. That's true. You, and, and I just don't think that's the right thing for her. But you know what? She, I don't think she's going to be happy until she does because she worked hard yeah. learning how to, to, to be a pro wrestler, sure. to do this. Sure. And so I get it. I just And I've told her this, like, in interviews I've done with her and like in private like several times before that I just I look at her kind of like Miss Elizabeth and I never wanted to see Miss Elizabeth <laughs> in the ring wrestling right well Lana's such a great performer and a very good actress and obviously she's a professional dancer as well but she's she's the kind of person that could run a show like you could put her yeah. as general manager and okay yeah I'll listen to you you're a boss uh, so I understand your point there. yeah she is a boss and she you know She's of like the you know the quote unquote millennial generation, but she grew up and spent a lot of time in Eastern Europe. Sure. Yeah. You know, in Russia. I mean, you know, and uh, 
and just she was raised a little different and she's a she's got an incredible work ethic just insane but you can understand when someone wants to do something that's right it's hard to tell them not to yeah yeah and i and i knew last time i talked to her was on tomorrow's show uh with kevin undergo and uh i was mentioning that again to her how i really didn't see her as and and she was pretty adamant and that's cool. And she should do what she wants. Well, it's a similar situation. Not uh, what I wanted. <laughs> right. Well, about a year and a half ago, Alex Riley would jump on compadres all the time. Yeah. And he would tell us, you know, I want to get back in the ring. He said, and he flat out said, he goes, I understand me getting back in the ring might make me lose my job, yeah. but it's just something I have to do. And he did get back in the ring. Unfortunately, it wasn't too long before he was released, but he said, this is something I'm willing to take the risk on. He's like, I know I have a stable job as a commentator, but it's just not what I want to do. Like I think so. I think La, I think Lana's in the same situation. Not that she's going to lose her job if she doesn't, no, but no. I think that she's been talking about it and asking for it and demanding it so much that at this point, if there's ever a time for her to not put her with Rusev right now, yeah. it's right now where they've both gone over to SmackDown and they want to potentially make Rusev a world title contender, which would be a great idea. And it'll be easier for Rusev to get over no matter which alignment they put him in without Lana to start with. Yeah. Um. So I think this is the time. So I think that they're thinking. If we're ever going to see if Lana will stick as a wrestler, it's now. And I think that they're going to give it a shot. And if she doesn't stick as a wrestler, then she'll go back to being a manager. Because she's too talented and too too, uh, too well-rounded and, and, yeah. and, and too valuable. Yeah. And she's also on Total Divas now. So, I mean, she's not going to lose her job if she doesn't work out as a wrestler because she's so good in all of her other capacities. Yeah. So, I just think it's just like now or never is a good chance. And we'll see what happens with it. Yeah, yeah it's kind of like going backwards is... She's learning the wrestling aspect of it now. She already has all the mic skills and everything else, the look and the character. Here's the thing, though. But she learned that wrestling stuff back in, uh, like, FCW, NXT, when it was still in Tampa. I, I um, And, uh, I, I mean, I saw her there. So it's not like she had just now said, ah, I want to be a wrestler. It's been it's, a couple of years. Yeah. It's that she, was, she started out doing it, and they, the role they created for her just... Didn't, didn't include that, that part. Didn't so. fit that lane. Yeah, and she worked hard at it, and so she wants to... One of my very close friends was part of that group of 12 women about three years ago who were chosen to audition, and uh, she's actually a very good friend of Lana in real life, going back to their college days. Was she one of the cheerleaders, the girls that was in the... Cowgirls? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. she's like a sister to me, and, and right. she was telling me all about her, and I said, wait, did you say she's fluent in Russian? And she goes, yeah. I go, oh, she's immediately... She, oh, yeah, she's in. <laughs> you know what? She's beautiful and she speaks Russian. Oh, it's yeah, gonna happen yeah. for her. And sure enough, it did. And she also uh, she got the job in part because she break she did break dancing at her. Uh... That's another thing. Like there was a she wanted to do this. Uh, she wanted her character to branch off into like some kind of a break dancer right. character <laughs> at one point. Yeah. Yeah, and I was like, no, <laughs> no. I mean, don't it. do it. She just one thing that I admire about her is like she's really. She loves the things that she loves and wants to do. Got it. And yeah. uh, she's passionate about it and keeps putting it out there. And I, I, I respect that. I do too. And Eva Marie was the same way. Uh, like, I, I'm a huge Eva Marie fan. And she was way up front about the fact that she didn't know how to wrestle, which is why she was so interested in going back down to NXT and learning the actual wrestling. Part. Yeah. And then when she came back up, she was so passionate about, let's, let's harness what I have and... It, Man, I'm so bummed out that she's not going to be around anymore. So that's oh, did they let her go? Allegedly. They haven't officially parted ways with her yet. Huh. I don't like... think I'd give up on her. I wouldn't either. I, I, like, it's so rare. It's so exceedingly rare for someone to generate that kind Oof. of heat from everyone, no matter what. She's got, like, Roman Reigns heat yeah. for a woman. Like, that doesn't happen. That's amazing. And, and, you, and to be able to let that go... And that, I think it's a mistake. And that brief moment where they had that uh, voice of God announced for yes. her that why she couldn't make that it. That was just such a brilliant genius. genius. So brilliant. Yeah. And I'm I, I'm just so upset. Are you really? Yeah, I get worked up about <laughs> it. Because I'm a huge Eva Marie fan. And I think that what she has and the way the fans feel about her is legitimately invaluable in professional wrestling right now. Yeah. And, I mean, you don't have to be... There's a lot of positions in the WWE that yeah. don't involve getting in the ring exactly. as well. Yeah. So I and just, that was her whole gimmick was she never she would come out for a match and then never end up wrestling for yeah. one reason or another, and that's so smart. Yeah, I loved it. 
Yeah, it was going to be tough. I knew it was going to be tough for her when that when you know when they discovered her or when they didn't discover her. She she put herself in the right place at the right time. Right. So, but um, well, so, with the five women in this match, who yeah. do we think has the chance to take it? I just can't wait to see it. I mean, SmackDown just keeps getting better and better. And granted, you put two ladder matches on any pay per view, Raw or SmackDown, it's going to be amazing. But you look at these five, wow, they're going to put it together, right? and I'm really excited to see it. I mean. Of course, Charlotte's first in the picture, <laughs> as she should be. Huh. What about so? You think Natty? Do uh, you think they're gonna do anything with yeah. her? Yeah. I don't know. She might get it. I think El- Ellsworth is gonna help Carmella win it. You do. And, yeah, and Carmella's gonna bling it out, and she's gonna tease about like what show she's gonna go to to cash it in. Yeah. I have a hard time believing the first ever women's ladder match is not gonna be won by Charlotte. <laughs> Just because you could argue she's already one of the best women of all time. I think it's also um, they could that. do they could do a they could do a, a play on um, you know the fact that Brett and Sean had the first uh, ladder match in WWE and then you know Brett's always talked about how Sean stole the that stole idea. the idea and, and used it with Razor and uh, and you could you could you could play off of that and have Natalia like you know vindicate her her and her and the Hart family's legacy in ladder matches and stuff but True. Uh, I mean I think the only the only bummer at all about this is that the this is the entire women's division except for the champion so like with the money in the bank for the men like granted the men's division they only ever focus on like 12 to 15 wrestlers at a given time mm-hmm. that and that's including the tag division <laughs> you know like so it's it's a little bit like oh one out of these five and all of them have gotten title shots already, like gets the briefcase, and then any time in the next year can challenge Naomi or whoever's holding the title. Like, it's a little bit less exciting of like having a Mrs. Money in the Bank, but I'm very, I'm, I'm just, I, I think it's really cool. But like, that's the only, the only drawback, and it's not that big of a drawback. Is like the women's division so small. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think it's necessarily a drawback in the case that SmackDown has been surprising people with their wins and their victories and. Who's taking what championship? And and I legitimately think that every single woman in this match has an uh, has the ability and the possibility to win it, just for the sake of SmackDown surprising fans once again. Sure, um, I I agree with that. I like do. I think I think that honestly, if I had to pick right now, I'd say Tamina Snuka is going to win the match, just because no one expects it. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yep. That'd be crazy. Well, Sean, what do you think? I would think Naomi has to be a little bit bummed that she is the champion and can't take part in this match. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she has to sit on commentary or just kind of watch, you know? Huh. Maybe she know. should be on the hook holding the briefcase. I uh, I saw the, I saw her interview. Does she have a new catchphrase, Naomi? Like something about the glow? Feel the, Feel glow. the glow. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm going with Charlotte. I'm with Ela Guast. Huh. It, she's, it's hard to not... And now, granted, you and I might be way off in this, but... How do you not pick her? Yeah. I mean, she's in, in a short matter of time, in a couple of years, she's become the best one there is. Ah, uh, probably the best. Yeah. Yeah. I am. Yeah. I'm constantly. I'm constantly impressed by Carmella, and I'm constantly bummed out that she doesn't get a big reaction from the fans because she does everything well, and she's with she's with a good heater in Ellsworth, and Who? every time she comes out, it's just like Ellsworth will go through no, a ladder. By the way, he will yeah. definitely go through. I'm a looking ladder. forward to that. And I think you're right, but honestly, this may sound stupid. I think it's her music is part of it. I don't think her music does her any favors. It's it's slow to I'm start. Sure, I'm sure it contributes, but it's not like the Vaude Villains music that would completely kill the crowd, mm-hmm. where it's like the guy comes out with the carnival barking, and then there's the intro music, and then there's the actual yeah. music, and then they come out like that. I watched crowds just like the you know the gather round, ladies and gentlemen, and the people were like, oh, it's the Vaude Villains, and then there's like 45 more seconds before they actually <laughs> come out. I mean, hey, since we're already talking about the SmackDown brand, uh, you guys watched SmackDown yesterday? Yeah. How? What'd you think? Great. I mean, New yeah. Day came back. This was announced. Uh, main event was fantastic. Yeah. Um, let's talk about that. Ziggler and, and uh, AJ. AJ. Uh, was that a surprise to anyone? Mm. No. I don't know what they're doing with Ziggler. Well, here's <laughs> the thing. It's it's the Money in the Bank is what three weeks away, so they're essentially going to have to do a mix and match yeah. between all these six guys, just like they did on Raw, leading up to the Fatal Five Way. So you going have to in, position all of them like they're they're all threats, and Ziggler hasn't won a match in months. Yeah, it was a bone. It was a that was proper to throw him a bone like yeah, that for sure. And, and also, AJ Styles is in his hometown, and we know how that right. goes. Yeah, I said <laughs> that last night, and I, I a bunch of people had to you know just couldn't wait to correct me. Well. 
Naomi won, and it was her hometown, and this person, yeah, of Did you course, ever have one of those situations where you, like, it was a big deal made about your hometown, and then you had to wrestle a big match in that? She was yeah, it was yeah, called SummerSlam two, Summer Slam 2000 or 99, and it was Kane and I versus Undertaker and Big Show in mm -hmm. Minneapolis. Yep. And uh, Jesse Ventura was the governor at the yeah, time. I remember. I actually watched that the other night, yeah. and that's right. Ventura was uh, he was laying down the law throughout the entire pay per view. He <laughs> argued with a lot of people that night. It's the body's way. It's <laughs> my way or the highway. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So that I do. I, I have experienced that, and I've been on the other end of it too, where one time we had Raw in Atlanta at the Georgia Dome. That was like thirty, forty thousand. It was insane. And uh, I had a singles match, and I saw it listed on there. It was a single match versus Ron Simmons. And that's his hometown, you know. And um, of course, I, I had beat Ron, right? Wow. Clean right in the middle, one, two, three. Damn. So, and Ron was just <laughs> so good about it. And, and Ron and I did the exact same match that we did every single I hate to say it, <laughs> but nobody, nobody. It works. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the benefit of doing the live events and the house shows and the stuff that's not televised is you can do the same match every night. We did a, the same match whether it was on TV or not. <laughs> you know, and nobody noticed. I, so I was just in Pakistan two weeks ago. It was the first ever live pro wrestling events in the history of Pakistan. Yeah. I was doing commentary. And the booking was a little strange. Some guy from France was in charge of the booking. And he booked this one guy who's 53 years old and just had a hip replacement. I'll be honest, he shouldn't have been in the ring. But he was. But the way they booked the match was there was a, another heel, a guy from France who spoke no English. He just kept running away, and this guy's music, the the guy, uh, the hip replacement, was the oh 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 like that song, got the whole audience to do it, and he just kept dancing, no joke, for ten minutes while the guy from France would get on the microphone and scream at everyone to shut up. And the match ended up being like four minutes long, and it was like the hottest match of the night every single city we went to. I had a match uh, uh, on the. Uh all around the loop with Bob Backlund like that. <laughs> it works. Yeah. He ran around getting the people all worked up for like five minutes without us touching, running into the crowd, yeah. back over the rails, comes back in the ring, um, and then ends up getting me in the chicken wing. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> the guy would go, he, this dude would go up the ramp, back the ramp, grab the mic, scream, go out near the crowd, and just flip out for eight minutes while the guy just danced in the ring. And then everyone else is out there trying to wrestle and hear the crickets <laughs> yeah i mean this poor guy couldn't wrestle i mean he did it it was rough but they made it work he was a showman though wrestling's huh? the least important part of wrestling yeah. uh, wrestling isn't wrestling right <laughs> max landis yeah very true i'm not max landis Seriously. what else no, I, <laughs> no I, know, I know i know what else you guys what else from smackdown yeah. did you guys Anything? enjoy i mean the the two big announcements new day i, I love everything that usos do yeah Br brizongo and usos are both highlights of did you like the? How about the Brizongo, uh, like the, the little skit they, the, the, they had? The detective, the, it was yeah, so, so it was cool. like Fuji Vice, except for, you yeah. know, yeah, twenty seventeen. No, they're, they're great. They're great. I feel like those two have such a uh, strong voice in these segments. Yeah. I imagine there's one or two guys that are you know working with them in it, but you're really seeing their sense of humor in it and their performances. And Tyler Breeze is straight up cross dressing now, and hey, good for him. Yeah, good like for him. the Just fact fine. that Tyler Breeze is doing like two costume changes per match now That's is great. It, it, they're gonna, the, I I have a feeling like they're on a on a on a uh, Damian Mizdow tra 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 trajectory right now. Similar, yeah. Hopefully they don't get completely nuked like he did, but. They're just like they're getting so over with this, and I just hope it continues. Yeah, it's a, it it is it's so much. It has a lot of that same flavor as the Ms. Dow thing, but I think that there's more upside to this. Oh, absolutely, yeah, because there, because there's two of them. Yeah. They're in a real tag team. There's not like intrigue of like, oh, when's he gonna? Because the whole story of Ms. Dow was like, when's he gonna finally turn on Miz? Yeah. Like that was the entire story, mm -hmm. and they never did it right like they held off on it forever and then his big moment was losing the andre yeah <laughs> and people forget how incredibly talented in the ring breeze and fandango are because yeah. for a long time we didn't really see them and at the last pay-per-view uh is it pay yeah, yeah we talked pay about the backlash yeah. back sorry god i get it mixed up um you saw they went from comedy to being competitive in a matter of seconds which yeah. is so hard to do and they're both fantastic in the ring too so yeah. do you think they take the titles off the usos no no I, I think the Usos are so good right now. I feel like they should keep them for a long time. Yeah. Yes, and, and, gonna and the, the Breeze Ango is not the kind of team that I that you would put the tag team titles on for more than like a you know maybe a week. I you know just for a feel good moment or something maybe. And at, I think at the, most 
Breezango is getting so much good momentum and their positioning, like even though they're both not straight men, they're positioning Tyler Breeze as the even goofier member of the two. I think it could potentially turn into a sort of situation where you have Fondango break out again and Tyler sort of second him yeah. and maybe have Bre- uh, have Fondango challenge for like the United States title or something with Tyler Breeze in his corner putting on disguises and trying to help his buddy, you know, win stuff. He's the referee. Yeah. Now he's the opponent. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now he's, he's the somebody, timekeeper. Yeah, like... Now he's the announcer. He just dresses up like uh, That'd be great. Corey Graves. Or... They need a t-shirt, man. Oh, they'll, they'll get one soon. They now need that, to hop on that. that. This is happening. I think they're probably going to get like a Fashion Files shirt or Absolutely. a Fashion Police shirt. There's an easy uh, parody logo waiting to happen. Yeah. Definitely. Hey, um, is there is there anything on Raw that... Uh... Not that I know of. No. Johnny, you're the you're the raw guy. Yeah. I mean, raw raw from what I hear hasn't been that great as of late. I'm not gonna say that. Um, <laughs> look, it's I, I, if I didn't love it, I wouldn't watch everything. You know what I mean? Um, it's just it, it's it was a go home show leading up to the pay per view, so you can't really make a lot happen because the card's pretty much set. You Which know. was shocking that it was the go home show because like last week it felt like it was still like two or three weeks away. Yeah, well, it's every other week now. But, but, uh, did you guys like Joe and uh, and Balor? Yeah, I mean, anytime you get those two, it's going to be phenomenal. Yeah. The hard question <clears throat> to really decipher is who is actually going to win the Fatal Five Way because you could really make a case for all five. Yeah. Um, the easy answer is Roman Reigns, <laughs> but I think everyone wants Finn versus Brock, though. What about early on? Like, uh, they had, there was the tag mat, the tag situation. The Hardys were involved, and that's going to be a cage match, and they're going to tear it down. Yeah. I, I still think the Hardys hang on to it. I don't really know. I kind of stopped paying attention to the legal aspect of. What's going on with them? Oh, with and the Anthem. broken thing. Yeah, because it just—if you—if I keep reading it, I, it makes me more and more upset that it's not the thing. That's a, the, the weird thing about that is I understand like when a talent does that, when one of us like gets pissed and vents on social media, but like you know, as the head of a of a, the company, what are you doing? I don't know. Man. You know what? What the heck are you doing? Like, it, it's gone back and forth. Up. I don't know who from. I know Zeb has been very vocal on social media him and Rebby have been fighting back and forth which i don't think is a smart thing for him to do but at least seb's not doesn't own the company no has anthem been shouting a lot too yeah the, the owner of anthem uh he's the like, one that released the contract yes yeah. right? just all the silliness wow that is it all the dirty laundry that is not a smart thing to do at all no. but okay. is that the first don henley poll on, uh, sure. this, uh, <laughs> on, this, on this show <laughs> wow well but yeah I understand. Uh, I understand Hardy's wanting to fight over this one. So do I. Uh, it obviously they create. Um, that's a Matt Hardy creation. Come in on, your opinion, you've been long. in the business for so many years. You you've followed it from beginning to end. When I watch this, I don't think there's any. Maybe obviously Jeremy Borash was heavily involved. Right. But other than that, I have a hard time believing anyone on the TNA creative team had a hand in creating well, but, the whole. Thing. But that's the 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 legality of ownership and I know employ employment employ like it, it's all going to come down to one are the TNA contracts actual like legit contracts because the yeah. portions that he released the portions that the anthem president himself released are like this doesn't look like any contract anyone's ever seen because almost like every any contract you'll ever sign for anything in any walk of life the first paragraph of the contract is like this contract lays out all of the conditions. The first paragraph of this TNA Anthem Impact contract said, this contract does not claim to state all of the conditions under which, so it's basically saying like, it might cover everything, it might cover nothing. Who, who can say? So it's like- So it's more of a deal memo than a contract. Yeah, actual lawyers were looking at this and they're like, this doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So it's all about the, the legitimacy of the contract, whether the contract was like actually like well-written or, or written accurately or anything. And the other thing it comes down to is whether a judge is going to ter- determine is Broken Matt Hardy just a part of Matt Hardy, which predates his, which he owned. He owned Matt Hardy. Is it just a, is it just a, another version of that gimmick or is it a new creation? Because if the contract is legit and if it is a new creation, there's no question it belongs to Impact. Because regardless of how involved Impact was, he was he made it well under contract to Impact and they to air it. on Impact yeah, Television. Right. So they they would own it if that's if, if those two things are accurate they would own that character. Yeah, for None, sure. Nonetheless, still not a good thing to tweet that contract. And and not and my and really what I was saying is I understand uh, the desire to fight over this when you're when you created it, regardless sure. of how sure. how sure. it plays out legally. 
um, I get effort, that. The effort they put in. If you yeah. watch Apocalypto, where they did everything, you know, all the Impact ratings, their best rated episodes in 2016, they can't deny it was all because of Matt and Jeff. Sure. And that's why they want to hold on to it, even though they're not going to do anything with it ever. They cancel shirts or anything. Like, they still want to hold on to it. But it, I, I think that it's smart of Matt Hardy to be litigious in this case, not just because he has a, a, a claim to it, and especially in his mind, a very legitimate claim to it, but also because if it's Matt Hardy going after them, there's a much greater chance of everyone reaching a settlement, as opposed to right now, as we talked about last week, like WWE is a one buyer market, and yes. that gives Impact the leverage. So they're like, l- 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 we'll give you 500000 for it. They're like, nope, uh, then that's all there is to it, you know? I, I don't know if this has anything to do with anything, but I know like Matt's claim. Okay, there was never release a sign for Max L or, or for uh, Senior, Senior Benjamin, Benjamin. Or, and and that's no shock to me whatsoever because probably seventy seventy five percent of the appearances I did for them for pay per views or TV, yeah. they never had me sign a a, a release. Right. They never they forgot or they just they're too disorganized. Sure. Yeah. So uh, that, that doesn't shock me at all. And we also can't forget, <clears throat> Maxwell Hardy is the only undefeated baby in professional wrestling history. So. No, uh, Kevin Owens' son. What? Oh, yeah. He Owen beat Excalibur. Uh, Excalibur at uh, PWG. PWG show. Oh, boy. That's a feud waiting to happen. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> That'd Owen be great. Owen versus Maxwell. <laughs> Oh, crap. And probably so, yeah. Kenny Omega lost to a baby, I'm sure, at some point. Yeah, you would think. If it hasn't happened yet, it's yeah. bound to. <laughs> hey, so... Um, um, I guess that's pretty much it for news, yeah. right? Is there anything else? Mar- hey, Donica, is there sure. anything else? Uh, there's some there's some smaller stuff. Uh, Tommaso Ciampa going in for surgery this week. will be out for a couple of months after the Oof. huge feud that happened at the end of NXT TakeOver, which we talked about last week. Uh, and then rumors that John Cena may be coming back July 4th. Th- those were kind of the biggest things of the week, aside from what we already talked about. Uh, anybody want to come on any of that? I mean, I know, Bill, you mentioned that... Um it might be an ACL issue with Tommaso Ciampa. That's, yeah. God, that's so unfortunate. Um, so I'm a physical therapist. Like, it's like, if you have ACL surgery, you're out for quite some time. Like six, eight months, right? Yeah. Maybe I mean, even longer. If it's a clean ACL, you can come back 100%. Look at how many running backs have done it. Jamal Charles, uh, so many people, and a yeah. lot of wrestlers have two. Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins. The question is, how did he tear the ACL? When did he do it? How bad is the tear? Is it, is it only a slight tear where they just have to go in and, and tighten things up a little bit? That's a, a much quicker recovery. But if it's a full tear, you have to get it repaired because when you know you're and you know all about ACL tears, it's not easy to do because yeah. they, they land like this, ACL, PCL, and it keeps the tibia from jolting forward. So any kind of forward motion on the knee, you're not gonna have that support and your yeah. tibia is just gonna fly willy nilly. Mine and just, does that all the time. And, and it feels gross. Yeah, oh. and it, it bothers the cartilage. Just down the road, it's a very difficult thing to do. And obviously there's braces, there's knee pads, as you know. But for someone like Ciampa, who's at still a young age, he's got to get it taken care of. And it's yeah. just very unfortunate that it happened right now when they were about to set up this incredible feud. You know, feud. That was going to be like feud of the year, probably. Yeah. So let's hope it's only a partial. Yeah. And, and that's it. I wouldn't be surprised if they kept both of them off TV until Ciampa's ready to come back. Yeah, they, they uh, came out and said that they weren't releasing Gargano's medical uh, mm-hmm. issues right now. So they could, they could call the time on him whenever. Ah, uh, good point. All right. Well, I mean, if if that's pretty much it for the I news, think so. I think we're going to take a break right now, and uh, we'll come back with the uh, Jeff Cobb interview. Are you yeah. guys going to hang out and uh, talk to Jeff Cobb with us? I wish I could. I have to drive to Orange County right Damn now. Damn it. What about you, Bill? <laughs> if you want me. Sounds good. All right. We'll <laughs> be right back with Jeff Cobb, everyone. What's up, party people? Roxy Stryer here from The Tomorrow Show with Kevin Undergaro. We're your twice-weekly broadcast of One Man's Midlife Crisis and the mad millennials in Star Trek uniforms that follow him. And I'm one of those millennials, Lauren Legrasso here. We've had some amazing guests like Russell Simmons, Ileana Douglas, and Craig Gass. Coolio, right? Christian Blatt in the house to tell you to go to thetomorrowshow.com to check us out. We're live every Monday and Thursday from 10 to midnight Eastern. That's thetomorrowshow.com. Be there or be square, whatever that means. Our guest at this time represented Guam in the 2004 Summer Olympics as a freestyle wrestler in the light heavyweight division. He debuted in Lucha Underground and Aztec Warfare to win the Lucha Underground Championship. Uh, He's based mostly in NorCal APW, Pro Wrestling Bushido, Supreme Pro Wrestling, ranked number 50 in a PWI Top 500. Is that still a thing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
our, our guest right now is Jeff Cobb, a.k.a. Matanza. Lucha yeah. Underground's own Matanza hey, Jeff. the Monster. Hey, Matanza I'm, usually, I'm usually not the one that gives the introduction, so that was a little rough. I apologize. I'm very grateful uh, that you came on the show today, though. Thank you, man. Oh, my pleasure, man. Thank you for having me on, man. I think you did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> Do you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, man. So we, um, right before we came on the air, I was I was uh, asking you about because at first I thought you were still living in Hawaii, and I was I was thinking to myself, man, what a m effort that must be to fly to all these shows from uh, from Hawaii. But no, not now. You're in, uh, in the Sacramento area now, huh? Yeah, um, I did that like two or three shows, like fly out for a weekend and then fly back. And it was, oh gosh, it was rough, man. It's a five hour flight from the West Coast, so. Just, you know, adding just that to on. get to Hawaii, yeah. huh? Yeah, well, five hours from, from Hawaii just to get to L.A. Oh, and then, like, man. from L.A. to wherever else you got to go. Oh. If you are if you have a show on the East Coast, that, that must be brutal. But, um, Jeff, yeah. Jeff, um, you know, uh, we know you're a hell of an amateur wrestler and, uh, you know, represented Guam in the Olympics and everything. Uh, did you have a love of pro wrestling before that? Oh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's uh, why I became a amateur wrestler because I thought it was a uh, pro wrestling, and yeah, it just it just blossomed from there. I mean, I I was a fan since I was a since I could remember. Just like uh, Hulk Hogan is actually the guy that got me into it. He's, I mean, I'm sure he did that for everybody. Did you grow Did you grow up in Guam? Uh, no, uh, I grew up in Hawaii. Okay, so you like so you were like were you uh, GI like was your dad in the military or something? Uh, my dad was in the army, uh, but I was uh, I was born and raised there, and was I grew up there, and then we moved to Guam a little bit after that. And I was just curious as how you ended up representing Guam instead of the United States. Uh, well, we moved to uh, we moved to Guam uh, from Hawaii. Uh, we had a little financial uh, problems, and uh, my mom's side is from there, so we ended up just uh-huh. moving in with my grandmother. I uh, I wrestled in Guam one time in like ninety, I think it was ninety four, ninety five on the way back from, like we wrestled. Uh, w- I was. You were there. I was at that show. At I the was field at house. <laughs> I was gonna See, ask you, uh, man. I I was. It was. It was like a roll of the dice if you were there or not. But I'm thinking like, wow, he's from Guam. Odds, I yeah. wonder. Wonder if he was actually at the show the one time I was ever in Guam. And you were there. Yeah, uh, that was a uh, ninety four because I was. A- uh, I mean, I don't want to date myself, but that was in 94. Uh, I remember going to school and just wanting to get the heck out of there because I had to go, like, I wanted to be there and just, just hang out there the whole time. And it was, it was, it was awesome, man. And Who'd you wrestle? Who did I, I, it was probably, like, I don't know, Rick Martell or something like that. It was, it was somebody that was on the, on the Japanese tour with us. Hmm. But, um, but Jeff, that, that, uh. That's the only venue they have in Guam that you can really do anything at, right? That field house. And what is it? It doesn't even have bleachers. It's like it holds a couple thousand, two, three thousand people. Yeah, uh, well, that was actually the, that's actually the college, um, the college field house. I guess they have, it's uh, normally like a basketball, uh, yeah. big basketball games go on there. Like the championships for high schools usually go on over there, so. Is there a bigger venue and we just couldn't fill it up back in the day? <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that, <laughs> No, that was the biggest venue they, on like, yeah, that's the, like looking back, it's probably the biggest venue they, that they could could have housed something like that. Yeah. So you you thought when you when you were younger that you had you had to get into um, amateur wrestling to be a pro wrestler. No, I thought amateur wrestling was pro wrestling. Oh. Uh, wow. So what? Yeah, what I, how'd you feel when you showed up and there was no? Uh, like, where's the Ultimate Warrior face yeah. paint? Where, no Where are re- the tassels? Where's the wrestling ring? The ring? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, realistically, I thought I was, I was like, what the heck's going on? But I spent all my money buying the wrestling shoes and getting a physical. Um, so I, I figured I had to stick with it because, I mean, I spent all, all this money for it. How yeah. old were you? Um, I was a freshman in high school. Oh, wow. So, Did yeah, you... so you, like, saved up all your money to buy some wrestling shoes. So, Jeff... You, yeah, you didn't start. You didn't start am, an amateur wrestling until you were a freshman in high school, 
and yet you ended up in the 2004 Olympics. That's that's pretty insane to me. Yeah. Well, that was the only thing I was, I was good at, really. <laughs> now you're pretty damn good at pro wrestling, too. I've been on a lot of a few shows with you, man. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. So what was the opening ceremony like? Because you got to be the flag bearer for Guam. How was that, like, experience for you? Just that entire... Oh, it was great. It was it was crazy, man. It was like it, it's such a crazy experience. But uh, like um, it's like being in the tunnel for the stadium, and we're just waiting, and then they give us the go ahead, and then we're walking, and it's like, you know, it's like I think they said it was like eighty thousand people were in there. Holy shit! Was, if that if that's true, it was just eighty thousand people, all eyes on each each um, contingent that comes out, and it, it was such an honor, man. It was it was awesome, man. Yeah, it's such a crazy ass experience. Yeah, I can about imagine like coming out representing the country you you yeah. were born in. Literally, and like the flag bearer, the first holding the flag of your country. So all eyes are on you. And it just being uh, saying that I I'm an Olympian, like yeah. I just I that's about as big as you get as far as sports uh, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Like uh, nobody works harder than uh, than Olympic athletes. Yeah, was getting that tattoo a huge accomplishment for you when you finally got the Olympic rings tattooed on your back? Oh yeah, I mean I was, you know, I've never had the urge to get tattoos, but that one was uh, pretty significant for me. So just getting it was was pretty awesome too. Hey, so Jeff, um, you uh, it said you were trained by Oliver John. Is that was that in Hawaii? No, that was in uh, in uh, Sacramento. Oh, okay. Did you train at APW as well with like Mike Modis and Roland Alexander and those guys? Uh, no, um, APW was the, the company that I actually flew up from Hawaii for to wrestle in. Um, that was in uh, 2000, 2012. So you were going from Hawaii to NorCal and wrestling in NorCal, and then you just decided to move to NorCal because more companies were booking you there? Yeah, I mean, cause, like in Hawaii, there's only one company, and they run once a month. And I just figured, I mean, I'd done everything I could over there. I just figured, like, like, I'm not going to get noticed being in Hawaii, like, so far away. So I had to just get to the, I guess, the quote-unquote mainland to get some exposure. Well, what do you think really got you noticed in that mainland? Because for me, seeing your moves and watching your highlight clips on YouTube, I was like, this guy's awesome. And then I finally heard you were coming to PWG, and then your match with Hero at PWG, and it just seemed like skyrocket from there. Um, honestly, it, it was a PWG that got my name out there more. I mean, like, Lucha on the Ground definitely helped, but it's difficult because I'm under a mask over there. <laughs> and, um, you know, I still get people up to this day. You know, I, uh, my character debuted, like, two years ago, and I still get people that come up to me today like, oh, that's you? So, I mean, but, I mean, I definitely credit the PWG, uh, like, the current PWG run to getting a lot more exposure out there. Was that hard for you to be told, like, we're going to put you in this mask and you're going to be a completely different character? Were you thinking, like, oh, man, what happens to Jeff Cobb? All this hard work I've been putting into making Jeff Cobb a name and a character, and now I get to be whatever. It's not even like you knew what Matanza was or that he was written so highly for the Lucha show that you you were, like, risking it, rolling the dice, so to speak, n not knowing what you were going to do? So. Uh, you know, at first I was I was kind of bummed about being under a mask. You know, I didn't really. I mean, at the time when they told me the character, I didn't really I didn't really comprehend or grasp what it was. Um, but you know, like at the time, like I was just looking for any exposure to get my name out there, and then I just figured it's you know it's, it's just something to expand on on me personally. Instead of being the, the same person over and over in every indie company, that you know I can, you know, as an actor, I guess, you know, try to get different ranges, I guess, or but different characters played. Do you feel comfortable? So, do you feel comfortable under the mask now? Um, yeah, I mean, I've done it for for so long in so many matches that like I just gotten kind of used to it already. How hard was it at first? Because if you watch that first mask or um, that first match, it looks like you pull the mask kind of sideways. At moments during it, like you're struggling to breathe. 
Was that a big oh, issue? Oh yeah, definitely. That that, <laughs> that sucker is so hard to breathe in. Um, yeah, like I mean, I I would I would hope that they edited those things out, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely. There was a couple times where I was just like, "Sweet Jesus, it's hot in here." Yeah, actually. I mean, uh, plus it's hot. It, it's hot. It's hot in in general as is in that in that building. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it it's it pretty rough at times. I actually got to see um, you do a a dark match at Lucha Underground as Jeff Cobb, and that was the first time I'd, I'd ever seen or heard of you, and I was so blown away uh, at seeing your dark match, and I was just thinking like, man, this guy's definitely going to get a job at Lucha Underground, and then. Uh, and then I got to see one of your first uh, matches in, in the full Matanza gimmick. And like Jimbo was saying, like, and this was edited out of the, uh, the show, but uh, I saw you uh, just put, like basically pull the whole mask up and suck some air. And I was, I just felt so bad for you. Cause I was saying like, man, he's killing it out there, but he's also, he might be killing it out there. <laughs> I mean, Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. There was, there was a time um, like, cause we watch it in the back of the monitors. And there was there was one man one match in particular that everybody kind of they saw that the, the camera was right on me and like I was over there sucking air because it was it was really hot this one day and I was yeah I was dying. Do you take that? Do you take that? Do, do you get uh, booked on other shows with that with that mask gimmick? Uh, no, I mean as as of now, uh, it's uh, owned specifically for Lucha Underground, but I mean I think they're trying to work a deal out where. Like companies can book. So it'd be like how companies, companies book can book the character. Penta yeah. Zero M and not Pentagon Junior kind of thing, and Ray Phoenix instead of just Phoenix, like that situation. I think it's a whole different situation, uh, well, think, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, that there theirs is a whole different situation. Because they were kind of those characters before Lucha Underground, so they could still kind of uh, be well, those I characters think, well, out they, of Lucha they Underground. Left, they left AAA with that. Like, oh. They just yeah, it's a whole it's a big. Yeah, that's a big convoluted mess when you talk yeah. when you start talking about that and the legal like getting involved in like lawsuits and and all that down there. Those things can go on for years. Uh, like I don't want to go off into the weeds here, but like Mascara Sagrada, like well, for 15 years was, and I think is still still maybe fighting legally. The whole L.A. Park La Parka thing. Yeah, all of that. Oh, so wow. yeah, yeah, it's I didn't just even think of that. It gets crazy, but um, uh, Jeff, I saw you at at PWG recently not the last one but i think maybe the one before and it was you and uh mike him and riddle no, oh was that you and riddle in the tag match yeah against the chris brothers no who's it the 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 bucks uh, no. effing machines oh uh, the unbreakable effing machines michael yeah. elgin and brian cage yeah and that was insane man and then i saw you guys in uh um when i was when i was at the cow palace when we had that show there and it was you. Was it? It was. You, oh, it was recently. Yeah, but the it was. Inmate. It was a tag match, Jeff. Who were who you were in the match with? Because I know Cage was in there, and I know John Morrison was in there, and there was another big. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was a. It was a four way for the, for the APW Heavyweight uh, Championship. That wasn't a tag match. <laughs> no, it was, it was a fade of four way. Okay. <laughs> it was a hell of a match, though. That was the one that people were into the most. That's what I go by. Like, I, even if you don't watch the match, which I did, I did happen to uh, that one. Like, you can just tell with, but just by what you hear, you know. And uh, and um, the thing I notice the most is like, um, you can suplex pretty much anyone from pretty much any position. And and I'm just trying to figure out the logistics of that. Like, as far as like, you know, uh, it it kind of uh, breaks the, like the laws of physics a little bit, man. <laughs> Well, uh, thank you. <laughs> I, I honestly sometimes I don't know how they do it. I guess um, I guess the they say farmer strength or whatnot. But. Yeah, yeah, but also I think maybe we get it from the people too. Like we draw that energy from the people. But I shouldn't say we because I could never do that in a million years. Uh, where'd you? How did that end up? Did that end up happening on accident one time? I mean, the way you're just going into all these different crazy angles with it. Um. Yeah, I mean, when I first, when I was training to be a pro wrestler, I was trying to, you know, like, like I like Taz because I like the suplex because I'm, I'm not exactly the tallest guy, I'm, you know, out there, so I like, you know, like the shorter guys who could, like, 
like just low center of gravity and angles and yeah yeah the low center of gravity guys and you know i like those kind of guys and like so i try to patent it my move set based off of like off, off of those kind of characters and whatnot so yeah. But yeah i just you know i just figured i'd throw people and then i figure out different ways to throw people and yeah and hopefully it's it stuck and you know it's it, done me pretty good so far it's different like when you say different ways it's an understatement man because i just don't think if, if someone's <laughs> never seen some of these suplexes you've done like it's just i i like i know I've, i'm being redundant here but it's just in, in, incredible well yeah, yeah and how do you come up with like okay i'm gonna catch you in a german suplex and then i'm gonna twist you like a baby <laughs> and then i'm gonna release throw you <laughs> behind me like where do you come up with doing some of these moves how do you practice uh, that? Re- really, I really don't know. <laughs> I kind of just like just did it one day, and I was like, and people are like, oh, that's pretty cool. I'm like, okay, well, I'll keep doing it then. So when when somebody's getting ready to go for one of those rides, do they even know exactly what the ride's gonna be? Do you even do you even know? Um. Usually, okay. So normally, when people ask me, or like you know, for talking about a match or whatnot, um, I'll tell them what I do. Yeah. And a lot of times they're like, "Wait, what? I don't get it." Or if they like, if they haven't seen the clip or something, then yeah. I'll just say, um, then I'll just say, honestly, I'll just say, hey, just just relax. I'll take care of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, uh, Sean's totally right. I, I was uh, one of the things that impressed me so much when I saw that first dark match uh, in Lucha Underground was the tour of the the tour of the islands is one of the craziest moves I've ever seen. One of the coolest moves I've ever seen. And I'm a I'm a huge move nerd, and I just like there's something about taking a power slam and going the other way with it that's so insane looking yes and and is that one that i mean can you take us through like how you came up with the tour of the islands and also like is that a move that you need to make sure that someone else knows how to take properly or is that just sort of like i'm strong enough i can do it no matter what uh well it's funny because i saw one of my buddies do it in hawaii Hmm. um because he was he used to train or he trains currently with um with uh offa down in uh, Florida Mm -hmm. so like he came like he did that during a match and I was like oh that's pretty cool and he's like yeah I don't want to use it anymore I was like well then I'm like if that's cool can I use it so I started using it um as one of my one of my moves because I didn't that wasn't my finisher at the time and then I started getting a little bit bigger and like heavier and I was like I can't like my original finisher was like the shooting star from the top rope and then I was like you know what I can't like that's just not good for my knees and just just everything in general. So I switched it up to that. And people like there's a couple guys that were saying that that was that the tour of the islands is a lot more impressive visually than. So I said I just started using that after a while, and, and for the most part, people take it correctly. Uh, I had one guy that you know was telling him like, oh, so this is how you take it. And I don't worry, I know how to take it. And then he took it the wrong way and. His, his feet were under him when we landed, and that was his fault. So, oh. so he, he only, he only, yeah, he only sprained his ankle. Oh <laughs> man! So speaking of the tour of the islands, Eric Rowan used a kind of version of this on SmackDown, I believe, recently. What are your thoughts on people kind of trying to take, I guess you would say, your move and maybe put their little spin on it and use it, but it's not as cool. Uh, well, you know what. Realistically, I mean, every move is pretty much a variation of another move, so I don't, I don't take it too personal. Um, because apparently, uh, apparently, um, Michael Tarver used this fin- like used this move before, but I, I really, really, I never saw him do it. So, yeah, but they you know, they, they didn't do it like you do yeah, it, Jeff. They... You know, you put your own, okay, well, you put your own special little stank on the end of it, and and it's just. It's just, it's yeah. I've it seen a way super believable too. It didn't even look like you. the same move. It, yeah. it doesn't even look like the same move Tarver did back it then. Looks I, like I, it, it looks like a video game finisher. Yeah, it doesn't look real. And it look, you know what? Yeah, I mean, you seem strong enough that you could do that to just about well, anyone. It you seems did it like. to Keith Lee, didn't you? At PWG recently, you guys were both tossing each other around. It was like Godzilla versus King Kong. Yeah, that that was a fun way. I honestly didn't think I could do it for a guy that size, but. I guess, uh, like, like, uh, like, uh, Sean was saying earlier. I mean, once that adrenaline gets going, you can pretty much do almost anything. Wow, what we're looking at a clip here. We're looking at a, a clip of some of some of the moves. It's like a highlight clip of that match with Keith Lee. And uh, yeah. wow, like, man, yeah. T-boning him right here. Yeah. 
That's a big boy. And then how does it feel when someone like Keith Lee is tossing you around? Because I'm sure that doesn't happen to you very often. Uh, yeah, it's very interesting because it's, it's, a, it's a rarity for me. So I, sometimes I get a little scared. Like I get a little nervous sometimes because I'm not used to being have my body over my head. It's good but to get a taste of our own I, medicine once in a while, Jeff. Oh, yeah, it, it, was, pretty, it was really fun. It was really fun. Yeah, I was. I, mean, I don't want to keep taking. I don't want to keep doing that, but you know. It's, right. <laughs> yeah, both Jimbo and I were it was super fun. Both Jimbo and I were in the house for that match, and that was. I mean, people has were, people be. were having the most fun that that match the, uh, of the entire night. Um, but what I want one thing I wanted to ask you um, is I wanted to ask you about your WrestleMania week experience this week in Orlando because this is really your first week, uh, really being like because I mean, Jeff Cobb really became a name uh, into it. In, in in into itself this year, and I wanted to know, this is your first week with high exposure as Jeff Cobb, taking part in that uh, WrestleMania week. I wanted to know your general experience and, and how many matches you ended up wrestling that weekend because I know Sammy Callahan had eleven matches that weekend. Um, I, I just wanted to know what the workload was like and what it was like to be around that many wrestling fans all wanting to see Jeff Cobb. Uh, well, first off, uh, I had five. I did five shows. Or uh, five matches, I guess. Um, me personally, I didn't want to run from one venue to the other venue because I just, I, yeah, I don't like to be. I don't. I'm not a big fan of being rushed. Me either. Uh, I'm with you on that, man. Yeah. And and I and I wanted to, you know, take it all in. You know, have like the the full the full exposure of it instead of just going from point A to point B to C to D. You know, back and forth, back and forth. So. You know, I wanted, and I wanted to interact with the fans that came to the specific shows. So, you know, I, I didn't want to take too many, too many uh, bookings, but I wanted to get, you know, a good amount. So I did five, and it was it was perfect. You know, like a majority, like four of them were in the, in the hotel that I was staying at at WrestleCon. So that's awesome. Like I didn't have to travel. I didn't have to travel far. You know, like ten minutes, I was home already, <laughs> or ten minutes, I was back in my room showering. So it was great. Hey, Jeff. I, I, I hate, I'm not, I don't want to go backwards too far here, but it was just something I was thinking about, like, you know, um, you we're talking about your amateur wrestling, uh, background and going that, uh, from amateur. And once you got into, uh, pro wrestling, uh, you know, it's a different kind of hard work. Uh, was, how, how was it for you making the transition? Uh, physically I was, I was fine. Um, because I was just coming off of uh, when I started uh, pro pro training, I just finished uh, I just finished got out of uh, college. Yeah. So I was in like probably some of the best shape I've ever been in. So like I was, you know, the the physical side of it was fine for me. Um, you know, the bumps, the run, the cardio aspect of it, I guess, like that that was fine for me. Hey, but uh, you're so much bigger. I'm I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off mid sentence. Go ahead. Oh no, no, like like the the hard part for me was like the, the psychology of it, of the, the psychology of wrestling, uh-huh. of pro wrestling, I guess. Yeah, and 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 um, and I I just know that uh, you're quite a bit bigger now than you were when when you were uh, an amateur wrestler. Like, got to be like 60, 60 pounds heavier, fifty sixty pounds heavier, right? Yeah, yeah, um, and that I blame a. Uh, I blame WWE for, but <laughs> how's <whatever>. that? <laughs> Elaborate well, on that. Uh, one. Well, when I was, uh, you know, you know, obviously everybody wants to. I mean, everybody wants to go to WWE. Like, yeah. So uh, I did a little thing with them, and they they wanted me to get bigger. Oh, so, did they tell you that? Oh. Yeah. Well, this was like when I when I was like only like two fifteen, two twenty. Oh, okay. So I was like, well. You know, I gotta get bigger. I'll get bigger. So I, I just started lifting more and less cardio. And did that affect your wind? How was it? How was it getting in the ring, Jeff? Like as far as like, uh, you know, uh, people can be in really good shape, excellent have excellent cardio, and get in the wrestling ring and blow up in about a minute sometimes. You know, and and a lot of that's nerves or just you know. Like you know, anxiety about like not wanting to screw up and things like that. Um, do you ever experience any of that? Uh, I I know my first pro wrestling match. I was I was dying. Like it was a, it was a different breed. Like like you said, you know, 
being in the ring is different than being in cardio shape or being a weightlifter or whatever. Like, like it's it's tough, man. Like, um, and then when your mind yeah, starts it's, going it's, really it's, fast, man, it makes you blow up even harder. <laughs> there's yeah, so many so it's factors. Like it's, it's, it's like a weird, like it's hard to explain. Like, you know, once you if you've actually done a wrestling match, then you'll see you'll know the difference. Like, like yeah, like the first couple of matches I did was like I was dying, but it was great. I have another question about making the transition from um, uh, amateur to pro wrestling, especially in light of what you told us about about gaining weight. How how great a day was it for you the day you realized you never have to cut weight again? <laughs> oh wow! Oh. <laughs> the greatest feeling in the world, <laughs> like never having to, never having to, you know, eat a can of tuna for a whole day as my only meal was, is wonderful. How do you feel about about overall about cutting weight and like and and young athletes having to cut weight like high school athletes? It just seems really unhealthy, Jeff. Um, when when I was in high school, it was a totally different, uh, totally different breed than the high school kids nowadays yeah um like when i was in high school like we would put on like trash bags and yeah. sweats and then go run and now like you dare not do that because if you get caught like you know your your whole high school is in trouble or you're probably suspended or or whatnot and now they have like a hydration test so it's a little bit different like when i was in high school so now like like there's only a certain amount of weight you can actually drop health or uh, like every like, per week so I mean, it's it's safer for the kids now. Oh, that's good. That's good. Well, can we talk about Lucha Underground and returning tonight on the L Ray Network? Yeah. Yeah. So. We got what everybody guys want, man. Well, we were at a show earlier in season three where you fought Dragon Azteca Jr., and it was supposed to be some kind of hardcore. It was a death match. It was a death <laughs> match. I knew it was some very lax rules match. And during this match, you guys are fighting. You fight up the stands. You fight into the like back end of the temple. And you go to punch Dragon Azteca, and he moves, and you punch through this window and slit your <laughs> arm open. Can you tell us about this oh, man. situation? Yeah, so um, you've seen the amount of uh, glass panels they have up there. Yeah. So... I, I don't know. I just, I was like, well, you know what? I could probably punch through a glass window. Not a problem. You know, like, <laughs> I saw it on the Karate Kid. Um, <laughs> I saw it on the Karate Kid. Yeah, so he he did it. So, why, you know, I could, I think I could do it. So, yeah, and I just punched through a glass, and I was like, oh, cool. Like, it kind of hurt, and then it felt like warm liquid running down my hand. So it was very weird. And I looked down, and blood was squirting from my wrist. So I was like, oh, crap. Did they give you the option of, of having gimmicks glass in there? You know, they did, but, um, like, again, sometimes wrestlers overthink stuff. Like, I mean, you've seen the amount of panels they have up there. Yeah. Like, I would have forgot which one was which, so. <laughs> you would have punched, yeah, that was, that was you punched the I wrong took, one anyway and still that. cut yourself. Yeah, I, I, I took full blame for that one. That was my fault. So did that screw up? The tapings, because I know that that match had to stop, and then they brought out, I think, Mundo and PJ, and they did a, a tag match against Ray and somebody else. But with the way Lucha plans on taping and shoots like a TV series, did that throw a wrench in the tapings for like that and the following weekend and waiting for your hand to heal and what they were going to do? Um, no, because uh, I, was, I was cleared like a, a week later. And we ended up filming it like two weeks two weeks after the incident. So, I mean, there was, we only had to refilm that one match. So, you know, it, it wasn't too bad. Well, that's good. So it wasn't that drastic of an injury then. It just seemed. Yeah, no. Like I mean, I mean, every like a lot of people like commented on it and re like quote unquote reported it that. I Goldberg myself, so yeah, that's exactly what I <laughs> thought yeah, I when they told me that that they saw that they saw you do that. I'm like, oh, like the Goldberg thing, because when Goldberg did it right. though, that was a pretty bad, yeah. I mean, like it, it, he was out for a little while because of that. Yeah, he said he almost lost his yeah. arm or something. So yeah, his, but his, like so his was I guess it's like the tendon, but for me it didn't like I wasn't near the tendon. It just it just cut a vein, so. Mm -hmm. 
it wasn't as bad as Goldberg's. Hey, well, go ahead, Jimbo. I was going to say, there's so much going on in the temple and so many moving parts. Are there any, like, unsung heroes there that don't get the credit they deserve and back in production or, like, the people that come up with the costume designs or anything involving the temple or working backstage that, man, these guys really don't get the credit they deserve for making us look as good as we are? Oh, def definitely the costume guys. Um, I mean, they're realistically, there's a ton of people that don't get the credit that they deserve. Um, uh, I mean, just just the costume guys, the people that work there in general, that help us with everyday, day-to-day -day, um, things like picking us up from the airport, uh, you know, taking us to, you know, to grab whatever we need uh, before the show, uh, picking us up, taking us to the show, you know, just, just every, like, there's a, there's a handful of guys that don't get the don't get the credit and but you know i try to put them over on facebook as much as i can like when i tag them and post and and whatnot so it's good because you know uh when i went to wwf in 1993 the, like one of the first things that kurt heading mr perfect uh taught me when he took me under his wing was no get to know all these production people because they're the ones that make you look like a star and uh and so it's really it's really good to uh, to acknowledge these people, Jeff. And and I'm glad that you brought that up, Jimbo, because uh, you know so often like none of those people ever get any of the praise they deserve. Well, how much creative control do you have over your costume as Matanza? Like, did they come to you? Were like, here are the designs we want. This is the mask we picture you having. Or were you like, no, I think I'm gonna wear overalls with blood, and I want something more like this, and black out my eyes um no well they had a different costume in mind for me uh to wrestle in um and i didn't i didn't like it at all like it just what restricted it like? me and, and so um it was kind of like a it honestly it, it would have felt like a like i guess like kind of like a Braun Strowman outfit like hmm. cargo pants and like a cargo pants and a, a singlet top kind of deal. With a mask um, yeah, still or no I didn't mask? like that at all. With the mask that, that you have? Like with the Matanza yeah. mask that you have, but with just that outfit? So did they come up with this yeah, one or did you, did, did was this something that you, that you, uh, did, was this an idea you brought to them saying, no, I don't like that. How about this? Well, um, the, uh, the, uh, I guess the, you know, it's like a bodysuit. Yeah. Yeah, like that one was actually uh, they use that for uh, when they like I, I I wear that in the in the jail cell normally. Right. So and I and I asked them like, hey, can I just use this to wrestle? Because it, I mean, I'm comfortable in it. And you know, they just did a little alteration to the cost to, to the outfit, and and I've been using it ever since. And it just it just fits way better than what you were just describing with the Braun Strowman type. Car, yeah. you know with the cargo pants and the you know and all of that like that i can't even imagine you not have not looking yeah. like that no because that's what you picture someone who's chained up in a prison cell by their brother would wear you know <laughs> looks very very evil yeah uh jeff one thing i wanted to ask you is um i wanted to get your opinion on matt riddle because he's a guy who's just blowing up he's so in demand right now and I've, I've never been more blown away with, by someone picking up pro wrestling as quickly as he has. So I want to get your take on it as someone who's tagging with him and wrestling against him a lot. Uh, like, if I had one word to describe him, I would say natural. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Like, you're definitely right. Like, he picked it up so quick to make that transition from the UFC to, like, pro wrestling. Um, it's kind of it's kind of ridiculous how quick he's picked it up and how fast he's he's excelled at you know just in the position that he's in you know so i mean i'm i'm happy to team with him and i'm happy to wrestle against him because it's i like wrestling that kind of style where it's a believable style so i have no complaints at all and, and i have you know if i could wrestle him like like uh like jake roberts mentioned it one time that he wrestled uh ricky steamboat like 97 days in a row yeah and it was it was it was wonderful every time. Like if I could wrestle Riddle every like you know ninety seven days in a row, that'd be great too. 
because wow. it's so easy. Like we don't have to, like we don't memorize anything. You know, everything is like a ninety ninety five percent of it is called on the fly, and you know we just figure out a finish and go from there. Yeah, he's he's definitely special. Like uh, just like you and uh, and I think you guys have excellent chemistry as as a tag team. Uh, just off of, off of seeing you just that one time because it just your relationship uh, uh, is not just in the ring like you guys have great chemistry just at like you, you seem like you guys are f good friends you know and and you can't you can't fake that you know the people don't they they, they, they know when they see something real yeah I mean they definitely fans can see if it's uh, if it's true or not and you know we I mean we're definitely not like the best of friends because he lives all the way in Philadelphia and you know, I'm all the way in California, but I mean, like he's like, we're super cool with each other and we have the same goal and just to kick some ass and take some names. The same goal of retiring Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. Uh, if I can get that payday, sure. Why not? <laughs> well, you've always said you really wanted to wrestle angle. How close did that, come to happening on the indies because he was taking indie bookings and then it said he like stopped at March and it seemed like you were about to get booked to wrestle against him but he stopped taking bookings how close were you to actually uh, getting that match against Angle you know from what I heard it was pretty darn close and it, it just like the timing was just off by a little bit and unfortunately like um, I know in 2000 15 I was pretty close but then he ended up getting hurt in one of his matches in England and I think I was pretty close to last year but then he ended up uh, re-signing with WWE so you know I'm, I'm not going to blame him I'm not going to tell him I'm not going to tell him don't re-sign with WWE to have a match with me you know so but uh, you know I'm happy for what he's done and and what he's doing now you know I'm it's probably one of the few things I enjoy on Raw is him as the manager or the general manager Oh yeah, yeah. He's just impeccable yeah. when it comes. You to You think you'll yeah. eventually get this match against Angle? Um, I hope so. Do you hope it's in the WWE? You know what? If it <laughs> if it is, that'd be great. Um, because I'm sure more eyes would be would be seeing that than on an indie show. But I mean, you know, I don't I don't really care. Like just being able to share a ring with them would be great well in teaming and, and working with matt riddle has have you learned anything from him and his mma experience and have you taught anything to him with all your uh wrestling background and him being so new um you know well we spent a week in in germany together was that um, for, WXW? for wxw yeah and they have a and we stayed in the dorms which is like around the corner from where the where their school is. So we, we did some wrestling, um, submission stuff like a couple of days while we were there and he taught me a lot. But the only thing is like, like if I don't do, if I don't use it constantly, I forget it. So everything he taught me submission wise, I, it kind of went out the window, unfortunately, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, he, he has a great knowledge of, of submission stuff and he taught me a couple of cool things, but I only, I only remembered one thing that of all the like 10 things he tried to teach me what was that one thing don't tap oh it was like a weird a weird chokehold that i haven't used yet but maybe i might uh, do it down the road it's coming hey jeff i was uh i was just this past weekend i was at uh at a music festival with uh josh barnett and he was mentioning he had a match with you recently yeah we had a we did a show in um in a uh, Los Angeles area for uh, AWS, yeah, Southgate, and uh, it was it was awesome, man. Like, jo like Josh Barnett is so good. Yeah, he is. I think he's very underrated um, as a as a wrestler worker, um, and he he just gets it. Like he understands. Like he wants like the realism of it. And, like he is so. Good. I mean, what better? I mean, the former UFC champion um, wrestled in New Japan where. I would love to go eventually one day. So, and jo Josh is one of these guys like started fighting at a young age, and you know, still kind of seems like he's in his prime, Jeff, in really good shape. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't want to meet him in a dark alley, but 
So you guys had a match, and 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 it was a singles match. Do you have many singles matches on on uh, you know when you're out there doing this? Um, you mean like the the, the quote unquote shoot style, I guess. Well, no, I mean I well, I imagine you don't have many of those just because who the hell can you really do them with that where it's you know where people are gonna buy it? Like I buy it from you and you and Josh, but like you were like. You know, somebody without the pedigree that you two have, I don't want to see that, you know? But um, I, I was just curious, like, because um, I've only seen you live. I've only seen you in tags or, like, four-way situations. Do you do many singles matches? Um, yeah, I normally do single matches, like, when... Um, but the, uh, the... Like, that style um, is, is, a rare, is rare for me to do. Right. Because, like... Like you mentioned, there's not many people that can do it realistically. Um, I mean, there's a handful of guys that I that I train with out here that are pro wrestlers, like a, like a Timothy Thatcher, yeah, or a Jr. or a Jr. Kratos, and we we do that style on a regular. So you guys just roll around and 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 have matches like that, like uh, yeah, like we we used to train together. One um, actually is uh, with Oliver John is yeah. a he heavily influenced like my career and, and Timothy Thatcher's career. So, you know, it kind of reflects in our work. So you, Josh said that you guys didn't even, you had nothing worked out just, uh, and not even the finish, right? No, not even the finish. Uh, he said, I'm, I'm just going to put you in a, a really painful submission. I was like, Oh God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> oh. right. so and it, was, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. It was one of my most favorite matches. It's definitely in my top five now. So when he puts you in that submission, do you like rush to tap out? Or are you like, oh man, should I wait till it hurts? Or does it like legit? He like legit puts you in that submission. Oh, I mean, well, he didn't crank it onto a hundred, but it was def like, it was definitely there. Like, it en definitely hurt enough to let you know. Do you, do you find it's yeah. hard when you guys are trying to work this style of making it really believable that sometimes it might not look so believable because you're in there with a professional who really knows how to hit somebody and he's trying not to like break your jaw when he punches you or really make you tap out and hurt you? No, not really. I mean, it's uh, like he, like I said, like, like Barnett as an example, he's so good at what he does that, I mean, if he wanted to, if he wanted to knock me out, he probably could have. I mean, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think I don't think so. What other? I don't think it's that hard. What other guys like Matt Riddle and Josh Barnett and Timothy Thatcher do you think should be getting more mainstream exposure on the independent scene and booked more places and more notoriety? Um, there, I mean, there's definitely like in the UK there, like I just came back from England and there's like their talent out there is ridiculously like they're so good out there. Amazing. Out there, um, yeah. uh, I mean, out, out in America, I guess, uh, like one of my buddies, uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, J.R. Kratos, he trains with uh, myself and Timothy Thatcher. Uh, I mean, he's so good. Like WWE has been looking at him for like for two years now and for him not to be doing what I do, it, it's a, it's a shame and it's a crime, I think. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I can't book people. I just recommend people, and it's up to the bookers to use them or not. But um, yeah, definitely a Jr. Kratos. Um, a Keith Lee is really good as well. I mean, he, you know, he he's been under the radar for a while and now he's starting to break out so yeah he's been around a lot longer than i realized jeff because when i was talking to him at uh at P pcw show uh after the match i was giving him a few pointers and when he told me he had, how long he had been around i was surprised because i i had i hadn't heard of him and i was like thinking wow this guy's got a ton of potential mm -hmm. you know so yeah like he's, de he's definitely good like i met him randomly and like we had a show in rhode island of all places and you know we it was so much fun as he's so good and he's a big guy that can do a lot of cool stuff you know so one thing i told him i said man you gotta work on them strikes you gotta work on them strikes man or don't do them or forearms or something uh because when you when you've especially in front of intimate crowds man you gotta bring that 
Yeah, like yeah. well, that's what I was getting at with like the whole Josh Barnett when you're trying to like make it really believable yeah. and you're a known UFC champion and you're like pulling punches. It's kind of if so, so. Hey, um, so Josh told me when you guys had that match in Southgate, he told me that the people got with it, but they got kind of antsy at first. Yeah, because I think they're just. I mean, they put that that style of match as the main event, and then they they saw like seven matches prior that are, I mean, I don't want to say, and I don't mean in a negative way, but the quote unquote indie match. Yeah. The spot fest. And then, then, yeah. And then they see that style. It's like, you know, I, I mean, I think at the end of it, we definitely got them. We hooked them, but yeah, I think it was a, just something different and they're not, they don't know how to react to it, I guess. Well, you, you, you teach them and that, and apparently that's what happened. Cause I, I guess, you know, he, Josh said that you know, like halfway through, the people were were got really with it, you know. So, uh, yeah, it's tough. It's, like I don't like, I don't like going on at, at the end, end of the night after everyone's doing all that stuff. And it's not because you can't follow it; it's just because the people get they get drained, man. Mm-hmm. You know, they get drained yeah, they, by they all that everything. stuff. Yeah. Well, do you do you ever have to re? organize a match when you've planned an entire match in the back and then you're like okay well we can't do that we can't do that we can't do that you talking to me or jeff well, both of you have you ever had that situation not me anymore, not you anymore. <laughs> but that's a good question for jeff now because he actually still does <laughs> actually stuff in his match <laughs> so have you ever had that situation um, well, i mean there's like I've I've had to change the match a few times, uh, just because like, again like they've seen everything, so I try not to be, I try not to be the same as everybody, and in, in the sense of like match I guess match layout or whatnot. But I mean for the most part like, sometimes they don't want to see different. that. They just want they just want to see your they just want to see your highlight reel. So, huh. <laughs> so sometimes we just say screw it and we'll go. We'll, we'll go balls to the wall, and then sometimes we'll say, screw it, like, less is more, you know? So, Jeff, you're comfortable going out there and just calling it on the fly or, you know, having it all laid out ahead of time? You're good either way? Uh, I'm good either way. I prefer to call it out there, but um, I learned this firsthand, like, especially at, like, uh, like my first day at Lucha Underground. Yeah. Um, I was like, well, what do you, well, you know, we, we sat down with an eight. Uh, Chavo Guerrero was our agent. And uh, I remember sitting down with him, and I was like, "Well, so what are you guys gonna do?" I was like, "Ah, well, I was like, well, we're just gonna call it out there." And he's like, "Uh, well, it's TV, man. <laughs> um, it's a little bit different here. Like, we need camera angles and capture it." And I was like, "Oh, crap!" <laughs> so right. that was pretty rough. Yeah, that yeah. was something I, mean, I was know, wondering I, about. I, 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 I can do either way. Um, I prefer to call it on the fly because you know, you never know with uh, with fans how they're gonna react to things. Yeah, I like the stuff that needs structure to, to be structured, but like for the most part, I like to be able to go like whichever direction the people uh, tell me is the right way to go. So like bullet points, yeah, as far kind as of. as far as like for Lucha yeah, Underground, yeah. it'd be like here are the bullet points we're gonna hit so that you know where to be at for camera angles, but everything else you guys get to fill in the blanks. I get the impression. Yeah, like, well, they... I... Sorry, go ahead, Jeff. Sorry. No, no, uh, yeah, I, I love bullet points. Like they're they're easier for me to figure out a match because, like, I mean, you know. And, and then I think it's it's tough too because sometimes not everybody can do that, mm. can work on with bullet points, you know. Because, you know, what if the like, you know, midway through the match, like the fans don't care, you know, you gotta you gotta be able to change it on the fly, and a, a lot of people can't do that because they're so used to A to B to C to D. And it's so painful to watch when, when, when that's going on, when the people aren't buying what they're selling and, and they know it, but they don't have anything else to sell them. <laughs> yeah, man. It gets bad. It gets real uncomfortable out there. Well, in Lucha Underground, you've taken some hellacious falls and done some really cool stuff. That roof, when you and uh, Mill fell through the roof of Dario's office, what was that experience like? Do you get to rehearse that? Or are they just like, no, you got one take at this, and we're just gonna go? Yeah, it was just one take. Um, I mean, the Ricky Ricky Banderas or Mil Muertes or whatever you want to call him, like he's he's really good. He's um, amazing, man. I mean, uh, 
yeah, he's he's uh, he's a great ring general, and he knows his stuff. And and I remember he told me like 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 uh, when we were on there right right before we went through the roof, he's like like just hold on, brother. And I was like, oh god, yeah. <laughs> like so yeah. And then we just went through, and it sucked. It sucked, but whatever, you know, it's for the show. Who were the guys you had the best? Uh... Best matches with Lucha Underground that you like working with the most. Not like trying to say you didn't like working with these other guys, but the ones that really stand out to you, that you had the best chemistry. Oh, with. um, definitely uh, uh, Ricky Benderas. Uh, yeah, just I like that. Phys- I like that physical style of, of wrestling, and he's a very he's a very physical guy. Uh, definitely him. Uh, Willie Mac is yeah. another one that I've had good chemistry with. Uh, Ricochet or Prince Puma or whoever you want to call him as. Um, I mean, he, you can't have a bad match with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you guys have a really so good, good David and Goliath story there between you two. Mm-hmm. Yes, I mean, he's definitely one of them. Uh, you know, and yeah, definitely those guys. Uh, I like working with Cage because, you know, he's a, he's a big dude that can go as well. So. You know, I mean, the stuff I see him do, I just like sometimes I'm thinking to myself, man, I'm glad he wasn't around back when I started because <laughs> nobody would have gave two shits about what I was doing. <laughs> man, he moves around in there like like nothing. And his, and his body, yeah. man, like it's just insane looking. Like, I mean, he's just, he's got that rugged, like, you know, the body blower body, but like, you know, not all shaven down. He's got some body hair. He looks like a man, you know, like. Anyways, what about working with Rey Mysterio? Um, you know, I can't um, not forget about him, but like he's he's another he's one of those guys. Like I said, like he's so good and at what he does, uh, it's ridiculous. But yeah, I, I love working with him, man. I mean, it's an honor to work with a, a guy like him. Where you know, like you know, I'm just this new guy, and I'm like, hey, my character, I have. To I have to suplex you. Is that, are you cool with that? And for him to trust me to suplex him and not hurt him, it's it's great, you know. And, hey, uh, Jeff, being in there with somebody like that, that the people have this in, in emotional investment in for all these years and they care that much about, like, it makes it a lot easier when you're in there with somebody like that. You know? I mean, you notice that? Yeah. Uh, you know, like, uh, going back to the less is more thing, like, but he doesn't have to do much, and like the crowd loves him because he's already over. He doesn't have to work to get over. He's already over. There's a huge difference between yeah, working to get over and already being over. It's two different types of work. Well, yeah, what advice could like, you give to someone just come working out there to get and just over? Look around, and he'll he'll be he'll be over. Exactly. And once you get some steam on him, the people are right there. They're already behind him. You yeah. Know? And they're waiting for him to come back and exactly. kick your ass eventually. Yeah, and it's like taking candy from a baby. It's 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 sweet. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jeff, you've got Lucha Underground coming back. You've got the rest of the season, hopefully a season four and, and so on beyond that. But for Lucha Underground and beyond, uh, what what are your goals remaining in, in professional wrestling? Where where you want to take Jeff Cobb in the future, and what are your bucket list items? Um, well, definitely Japan. Um, I just I just feel my style would work there uh, great. Um, I think the Japanese fans would be really receptive to like um, someone compared me once to a uh, uh, Gary Albright. Hmm. I mean, a sh- obviously a shorter version, but <laughs> yeah, but I see that. With, I, with, I totally see that. For sure, definitely. And probably with better hair. I can't grow. <laughs> yeah. I can't grow a mullet, but but I mean. Yeah, definitely. Like, I would love to go to Japan. Um, that's definitely on my uh, foreseeable future list or my to-do list. Um, and you know, def- you know, people always say, you know, like WWE is like, like the NBA or the NFL. And you know, I would, you know, I wouldn't rule going there out. But uh, as of right now, I'm happy where I'm at. So you're not waiting for WWE up to call you? Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. If they call me, I would definitely uh, entertain the offer. Yeah. But I mean, I definitely want to, you know, I want to see because you know, like once you're with WWE, you're with WWE. You can't go anywhere. And when you're, uh, you know, like a quote unquote indie guy, you can pretty much go wherever you want to go or take whatever booking you want to take. You know. 
It's good to be an indie wrestler. It's good to be an Especially independent now. professional wrestler. And you're a busy one, aren't you, Jeff? I, I try to stay busy. I, I got mean, bills to pay, you know. Yeah, how many times a month are you wrestling? Um, I try to do at least uh, like three a weekend. So, you know, the, you know, um, I had a. Uh, 12 shows this past month and you know it's it's been good to me you know i you know my bills are paid i'm having fun i'm having the time of my life traveling to places i've you know i've never been or go back because i want to go back yeah so and so you, great, you know? so you you're a full-time professional wrestler and you don't have to have a second job correct yeah it's a uh, full-time wrestling that's what that's it's awesome. all about man yeah. honestly jeff that's what it's all about. Whether you're working for WWE, Lucha Underground, Impact, ROH, just strictly independence or Japan, whatever. It's all about, like, this is what I'm doing for a living, and I'm good enough not to have another job. Yeah, it's the, just the freedom of it. You know, I, I I did that juggle thing for a while where, where I had a money to, like, I had a money to Friday job, and then I wrestled on Friday, Saturday, Sundays, and, like, it, like I could definitely tell, like, my body didn't like me for that and just to be able to you know just wrestle you know work three times a week if i wanted to and just have the weekend like the week off to re recover and and yeah. you know i can go to the gym when i want to and i can wake up when i want to and i can go to bed when i want to it's such a it's a it's a great feeling yeah well, and you're focusing you can focus on this job like to really to really be successful at what we do you have to be all in on it and like sometimes people can't help it they have to have that other job, and they do the best they can. But uh, you know, ideally, you have to you have to just be a hundred percent focused on this to really, really be successful. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, this is this is like with anything, you know. It's to the more you focus, the more time you put into it, the, the better your results are going to be. What was your uh, nine to five when you had a nine to five? Oh, uh, I was working uh, security at a high school. That's crazy. I mean, it fits, making sense. Do you ever think about going back there now with all your Lucha Underground and Jeff Cobb uh, exposure and people being like, hey, that's that guy from TV? Uh, well, you know, I, it, I ran with that for a while where, like, like some of the kids would see, like, they would YouTube, or they would Google stuff, and they would see, like, my, my moveset, and they're like, oh, so if I act up, are you going to do this to me? <laughs> uh, sometimes I'm like, yeah. But you know, it, was, it was a good little um, conversation starter with some of the kids. Well, I know you'll be back in L.A. for bar wrestling on June 8th. What other shows you got coming up before we let you go? Or what else are you working on that we could plug? We got Lucha Underground coming back uh, well, tonight. Yeah, Lucha Underground is coming back to TV today. Um I got a, you know, a couple, like, uh, I'm doing a San Diego loop uh, this weekend. Uh, I'll be in the main event with Rey Mysterio, so that's going to be great. Where's that? Uh, down in San Diego for uh, uh, FCW. Okay. Yeah, it's, a, it's a fundraiser for a, a local, I believe it's a local high school, so. Awesome. And, you know, they, they got Rey Mysterio to come on board, so I'm going to be in a match with him, so it's going to be fun. I mean, anytime you can share a ring with someone who's been there and done that is this the first time wrestling ray as jeff cobb um yeah <laughs> so I'm, I'm really excited about that as well that should be interesting so, oh you guys yeah, are wrestling every, each every other, other uh yeah well it's like a triple threat tag team match uh -huh. so there's six of us in the match but you know it's uh pentagon and phoenix will be a tag team uh ray mister and uh dragon Azteca are another tag team so that's going to rule. You know, I have again, a feeling I'm still going to be in the room with him, or in the ring with him. So. Nice. I have a feeling that Rey Mysterio and Dragon Azteca are going to come out the victors in that match. <laughs> I'm just guessing, <laughs> Jeff. Hey, you can't you can't have that, man. If, if they're in San Diego and he's from San Diego, you know, every time your hometown guy always has to lose, right? <laughs> oh, you're know, talking what about did you, earlier. Did you hear, read my tweet last night about that? <laughs> <laughs> when AJ lost, I, I saw some of that. Yeah, oh, it, it, oh, I don't get it sometimes, but whatever. I'm I, all, you know, I don't like that. I'm all about making the people happy, not just not screwing with them or screwing with the the talent, just uh, just to humble them or check his attitude. I'm, I've never been a fan of that. 
But I, I guess I understand why they do it. It's just not not the way I would do it. There's other ways of checking people's <laughs> attitude, Jeff. But I think they they do that every like for every person, right? Like, Damn near, I mean, man. If they did it once in a if they did it once in a while, I wouldn't really care too much, but, you know, it's like every time, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Not a fan of it, but it's not, I'm not the boss. So like, that's, that's okay. whatever. whatever. <laughs> so, Hey Jeff, I really appreciate you coming on, man. Thank you so much. Hey, Oh, thank you for having me on, man. It's been awesome. And I, I hope we, I'm, I guarantee we'll see each other somewhere soon. I'm just not sure where it is because I have no clue what my schedule is. So thanks Jeff. <laughs> hey, Thank you so much, man, and and uh, and, uh, and Bill Hanstock from Uprox with Spandex is here. He joined us uh, too, and thank you, Bill. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, man. Have an awesome day. Hey, oh, hey, you, Jeff. Too, One more time. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Go. Give us all your where they can find you on social media. Like if you have a pro wrestling tea store, any of that before before we let you go, because I want to want you to plug all that stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, catch me on uh, Twitter. Uh, it's Mr. Athletic J. Cobb. Uh, Facebook, Jeff Cobb. Instagram, Jeff Cobb. Uh, Pro Wrestling Tees, just search Jeff Cobb. For some odd reason, uh, Matt Hardy stuff comes up when you type in Jeff Cobb, but I, I haven't figured that out yet either. You but, should let them yeah. know about that, man. <laughs> it's affecting it your no, money. It, <laughs> no, well, uh, I mean, if I could get that rub for Matt Hardy Pro Wrestling Tees stuff, then that's fine by me because I'm sure know. he makes a killing off of those, but... Uh, no, yeah, it's it's weird. Like you type in Jeff Cobb, and my picture will come up, and then and Matt Hardy. So, and I'm <laughs> I'm not the Matt Hardy one. So, yeah. Cool. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it, man. Hey, thank hey, thank you. I appreciate you guys having me on. Okay, man. Have a great day. Uh, you too, bud. Sweet. Well, hey, um, I was gonna say we'll be right back, but I don't know if we need to be right back for anything. I don't think we need guys. to be right back. Mark, what do you think? Hey guys, we can we can end it out now if you want. Yeah, let's, let's do, do it. it, man. Hey, Je- hey, Bill, thank you so much, hey, man. For I appreciate me, you coming. Always and, a pleasure. And thank you for helping out with uh, with uh, with the in- with the Jeff Cobb interview just My now because um, you guys uh, made that. I appreciate <laughs> it. All right, you guys. Hey, um, so that's pretty much it for for this week here on Xbox One Two Three Sixty. We'll see y'all next week. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, Sean Waltman, producers Jimbo Frank and TK Trinidad, managing producer of AfterBuzz TV Wrestling Mark Donica, and the entire X-Pac 12360 staff, we would like to thank you for tuning in. Like us on Facebook, rate and comment on iTunes and YouTube. Follow X-Pac on Twitter at The Real X-Pac and email us at xpoc12360show at gmail.com. This has been a presentation of the AfterBuzz TV Network. Buzz you later.